welcome to the next lecture in electric circuit analysis in this lecture we are going to focus on mess and nodal analysis so let us see the introduction two powerful techniques that are required to solve any linear circuit forming set of simultaneous equations are then solved to obtain the required bars values of current and voltage so in today's lecture we are going to focus on two powerful techniques that will be used to obtain the value of current or voltage and the circuit that will be solved are basically the linear circuits so generally we will be having some simultaneous equations that need to be solved now in this powerful technique the first technique is the nodal analysis which is the systematic application of kirchhoff's current law so we have already discussed the kirchhoff's current law and in nodal analysis we will discuss how this kirchhoff's current law is applicable next powerful technique that we are going to discuss is basically the mess analysis which is depending on kirchhoff's voltage law and these two laws nodal and mess analysis will be very much useful in solving any linear circuit to obtain the voltage and the current so first let us go for nodal analysis so nodal analysis is basically a procedure for analyzing the circuit using node voltages as the circuit variables so we will take the voltage of a particular node as the circuit variable in order to solve the circuit so choosing the node voltage instead of the element voltage or the circuit in the circuit is convenient and reduce the number of equations one must solve simultaneously so basically the variable that we are choosing is basically the node voltage and we are not choosing the element voltage as the variable because we will see how this choosing the node voltage reduce the number of equations and the circuit become much more simpler as compared to the element voltage so first we will assume the circuit do not contain any voltage source so when we are discussing the nodal voltage at first we will assume that the circuit is not having any voltage source and only the current source are present in the circuit so the circuit will have only the current source which will be driving the circuit and the node voltage will be treated as the variable so there are some steps that are required to be known to determine the node voltage which is excluding the voltage source so we are not taking the voltage source now how the steps are there which is required to solve the node voltage so uh, first uh, select a node as the reference node so the first step in the nodal analysis is basically selecting a node which will be treated as the reference node then you assign the voltage v1 v2 v n minus 1 to the remaining n minus 1 nodes referred to with respect to the reference node so reference node which is again we will say to be the ground node uh, in reference to this other nodes will have a voltage v1 v2 to v n minus 1 where n is the total number of nodes including the reference node now you apply the kcl kirchhoff's current law to each of the n minus 1 nodes so we have studied the kirchhoff's current law as the algebraic sum of the current in a particular node will be zero this means that the current entering and current leaving the circuit will be zero at a particular node so use the ohms law to express the branch current in terms of the node voltage now ohms law also we have studied that the voltage will be equal to the current multiplied with the resistance of Of that particular element. So here uh, we are going to apply the Ohm's law also to the branch current. So then the final step will be to solve the resulting simultaneous equations to obtain the unknown node voltages. So the node voltages are basically V1, V2 to Vn1. These we need to solve using the simultaneous equations, and these steps will be followed. for solving any type of circuit which required the solving using nodal analysis so let us go by uh, into deep for the steps of nodal analysis so the first step was how to choose the reference node otherwise we said is to be a ground node because the potential we assume to be zero so in the reference node we are assuming the potential to be zero and hence the reference node is known as the ground node so here we can see that different symbols are basically used to represent the 
ground so this is the most common ground this is the ground symbol and this is the chassis ground so sometime we will be using this or this symbol or this symbol it doesn't matter the main idea is to give zero volt to the reference so the next step was to assign voltage designated to the non reference node so we have given zero volt to our reference node with a symbol uh, reference and we have other nodes one and two where the element meets so here we will be giving a voltage v1 and the second node will get voltage v2 so whatever the elements uh, nodes we have other node except the reference node we are going to mention the voltage v1 v2 to so on to vn minus 1 where nth node will be the reference node now once we have like uh, given the voltage to the nodes v1 and v2 for this particular circuit and we have zero volt in the reference we are in a position to write the kirchhoff's current law that is the algebraic sum of the current meeting at a particular node is zero so here if we apply at node 1 we can see that the current uh, that is i2 and i1 are basically leaving the circuit whereas the source i1 capital i1 is entering and the source i2 is leaving the circuit so here we can write whatever the source is entering the circuit and whatever the source is leaving the circuit to make it to be kirchhoff's current law similarly at node 2 what is happening how many currents are involved so we will be having first current i2 second current capital i2 and third current is minus i3 so we will just note what current is entering and what current is leaving and based on that the sum of the current entering is equal to sum of the current leaving we can write the node uh, equations in terms of the kirchhoff's current law so uh, we will follow the usual notation that the current usually flows from higher potential to lower potential and uh, divided by the resistance will give us the ohms uh, current so this comes from the ohms law so ohms law will be having i is equal to v by r so this v is basically the potential difference between the two uh, nodes and that will have from higher potential to the lower potential now in order to write the ohms law at different point like uh, the current involved with i1 so i1 will be equal to v1 minus 0 by r1 so higher potential is uh, v and the lower potential is uh, zero so higher potential minus lower potential divided by the resistance associated with that particular element that is r1 similarly if you're trying to write i3 equation so here the higher potential is v2 lower potential is zero and the resistance involved is r3 now the intermediate element if you see i2 here we don't know whether v1 is the higher potential or v2 is the higher potential so we can take one as positive and another as negative because the current is flowing from v1 to v2 so we can take v1 minus v2 by r2 but however at the end on solving we may get a negative sign indicating that the direction that we have assumed might be wrong and thus the negative sign indicates yes the direction whatever we have assumed must have been reversed okay so here we have taken i is equal to v by r formula in terms of the ohms law the same thing we could have written i is equal to the conductance into voltage so conductance is basically the reverse of the resistance so whenever we need to find the conductance g it is equal to the reverse of the resistance inverse of the resistance one by r and in that form if you want to write then we can also write our equations involving the resistance inverse to be the conductance so we can have the equations uh, which however is written in terms of the conductance and then suitable equations we need to like put on in the kvl equation so at node and node 2 we have already got this fundamental equation so these are the two equations we have got and we have already determined i1 i2 and i3 in terms of the resistance or in terms of the conductance so you can just substitute these values to be in the main equations and then we can form two main equations so we have basically two variables that is v1 and v2 are the two variables that we need to solve so basically if we have two variables it means that two equations we required to solve the circuit so he will be having the first equation here and the second equation here so 
application of kitchop's current law and ohm's law together will give you the simultaneous equations that are required to solve the node voltage now further we can just put up in this equations in the form of the matrix and we can solve it in the any calculator or any software to solve the simultaneous equations so here we have the conductance matrix z here you have the voltage matrix v and here you have the current matrix i so we can write that g dot v is equal to i and we can obtain the value of v as basically multiplying with g inverse into i will give you the voltage v so these uh, in for uh, this form can be solved either in any scientific calculator or we can solve in any software program like matlab or a maple software so we have different uh, ways of solving the simultaneous equations either in calculator as i said or some matlab mathcad maple softwares are usually available when the number of simultaneous equations are quite large and we are not able to solve those equations through using the calculator now there is one uh, very important uh, rule that is known as the cramer's rule which we need to know uh, in order to solve some simultaneous equations so generally in some time we will be not having the calculator or in exam we are not allowed to use the calculator in that way we will be having the cramer's rule to solve some simultaneous equations so to understand the cramer's rule let us take three simultaneous equations so these are the three simultaneous equations which are basically the functions of x y and z so here three variables are there x y and z and we have written in the form of simultaneous equations that is a 11 x plus a b 11 x plus c 11 sorry this is y and this is z so we have three variables we can take 11 b, b and c similarly we can have a 22 and a 33 like this variables we can take and the variables we have x y and z and these are basically the coefficients that are known to us now in order to apply the cramer's rule what we need to do is first we need to find the d matrix which is basically the coefficient matrix so just we take out the coefficient of x y and z so the coefficient of x y and z we take out that is the d matrix and the d matrix is basically 2 1 minus 1 from the first equation 1 minus 1 minus 1 from the second equation and the third equation will give 1 2 and 1 so here we get the d matrix uh, that determinant we need to find and on the right hand side of the equation we have the constant 3 0 0 that we need to put up now since uh, we need to solve three variables x y and z so x being at the first position y being at the second position and z being at the third position so in this d matrix uh, we will be substituting the values of x y and z for the three uh, determinant that is dx dy and dz so when we saw dx we will be substituting the first column with the values of the right hand side of the equations that is 300 when we need to find the dyy whereas the other two columns will be remain the same as they are in the d matrix similarly in dy we need to substitute the second column and dz we need to substitute the third column with the output or the rhs equation that is 300 whereas the dy we need to keep the first and the third same as the d equations d matrix whereas in dz we need to keep constant one first column and the second column so in this way we will be forming three dx dy and dz and one d matrix that we have from the before we need to find the determinant of all these matrices which we have obtained that is the d dx dy and dz and then we can find what is the cramer's rule formula is basically x variable is equal to dx by d so we have obtained the determinant of dx which is equal to 3 the determinant of d matrix 
is sorry the determinant of dx is 3 and the determinant of d is 3 so we need to find and the value will be equal to 1 similarly when we try to find the value of y it is equal to dy by d and z it will be equal to dz by d so we will be requiring these matrices determinant to obtain the values of x y and z if we have more number of variables we will be having more number of matrices but solving the determinant will be a challenging task as the number of equations increases in that case we have to switch to some software programs now in the first nodal analysis, we have not taken the voltage source into account. Now we are going to take the voltage source into account and then we need to see what changes happen in the node analysis. So now consider the following two possibilities. So let us take the possibilities what is going to happen when we have the voltage source. So the case one possibility is that when the voltage source is connected between the reference node and a non-reference node. So we take a reference node. So where is the reference node? The reference node is at zero volt. So if we have any voltage source which is connected between the reference node and a non-reference node, we simply set the voltage at the non-reference node equal to the voltage of the voltage source. So here if we see this V1 which is connected between the values of the 10 volt which is the voltage source is connected between the non-reference node V1 and the reference node is 0 volt it means that the v1 value will be equal to 10 volt directly because it is connected between the non reference node and the reference node however if we take a second case where the voltage source like this 5 volt is connected between two non reference node so if we take the two non reference node we have v2 and v3 which are the two non reference node in that case it will not be an easy task to solve the problem then in that case the node will become a super node now we can treat this particular node to be a super node now what is a super node a super node is formed by enclosing voltage source connected between two non-reference node and any element connected in parallel with it the elements should not be in series it has to be in parallel so it can be a dependent or independent voltage source so if we have a voltage source v which is connected between two non-reference nodes suppose this is i and this is i plus one then this node will be treated as the super node provided we don't have any element which is in series a element in parallel is okay it can be there but an element in series might must not be there then it is treated as a super node if the voltage source is present between the reference node and the non-reference node then we can take directly the voltage of the non-reference node as 10 volt so how do we solve that super node problem so you you can see here the 5 volt is connected between two non-reference node v2 and v3 and then this forms a super node nodes 2 and 3 form a super node and then we could have more number of super node involved here the example has been taken with two super node so previously discussed steps remain the same except the super nodes are treated differently so whatever we have discussed the steps for solving the nodal analysis that is choosing the reference uh, node then giving the voltage to the non-reference node and solving the problem using kcl and ohm's law so that all things will remain the same except the super node will come into picture so nodal analysis will require current through each element for kcl but current through voltage source is not in knowing in advance so one fundamental requirement in case uh, nodal analysis was that we required the current through each element then only we can apply the Kirchhoff's current law but we don't know what is the current flowing here in the voltage source which is connected between two non-reference nodes however kcl must be satisfied at a super node like any other node kirchhoff's current law is like always valid whether it is a super node or a node in that case we can write the equations 
of the Kirchhoff's current law treating both the node as a supernode and then we have I1 plus I4 which is entering the node and I2 and I3 is the current which is leaving the node. So here we have I2 and I3 which is leaving the node and I1 and I4 are entering the node and V2 and V3 is treated as super node which will be written simultaneous equations together. Then we can just substitute the values of the current in terms of the Ohm's law that is the voltage divided by the resistance involved then we can have one equations of the super node. Now one more uh, KVL equations will be required for the super node because we have a 5 volt source which is connected in a closed loop then we will be applying the Kirchhoff's voltage law to the super node so in this case we can write the equations of KVL that is sum of the voltage in MS is equal to 0 and then we can form an equations V2 minus V3 is equal to 5. Now some of the properties of the super node let us understand the voltage source inside the super node provides a constant equation needed to solve for the node voltage. So voltage source whatever is there in the super node will have a constraint equation. So you can see that both Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's voltage law we were applying uh, when we have a super node. So super node has no voltage of its own. So we do not treat the super node voltage as the voltage separately and KCL and KVL equations both are applicable. However, in the normal uh, nodal analysis we apply only KCL and KVL was not required but here Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's voltage law both are required. Now having known the most uh, fundamental uh, um, this technique that is the nodal analysis the other technique that is the mass analysis will focus. So in mass analysis we will have the mass current as the variable, circuit variable. In node analysis, we have taken the node voltage as the variable. In mass analysis, we are taking the mass current as the variable and, uh, and we will see the number of equations will also reduce. Similarly, whatever has reduced in the case of a nodal analysis. So nodal analysis, we are not taking the branch uh, voltage uh, into account rather we take the node voltage into account in the mass current we take the mass uh, current as the variable not the branch current so what is a mass basically we have discussed in the previous lectures too that mass is basically a loop that does not contain any other loop within it means it should be an independent loop there should not be any other loop inside so nodal analysis applies Kirchhoff's current law to find the unknown voltage in a given circuit where mass analysis applies Kirchhoff's voltage law to find the unknown current. So wherever we require to find the voltage, we need to go for the nodal analysis where we require to find the current, we need to go for the mass analysis. So in nodal analysis, we will be requiring to solve the Kirchhoff's current law equations, KCL equations, and here we will be having the KVL equations for the mass analysis. So these are our variables that we need to find the voltage and the current. So mass analysis is not quite as general as node analysis because it is only applicable to circuit that is planar. So in node analysis we can apply to any form of the circuit provided we know we can give the node voltage as the variable. In mass analysis we can apply only to the planar circuit. So we can say a nodal analysis is more popular compared to the mass analysis. So what is a planar circuit? A planar circuit is the one that can be drawn on a plane with no branches crossing one another otherwise it is a non-planar circuit. So if we are able to draw any circuit on a plane paper with using a pen or a pencil then it is known as the planar circuit and it's not have any branch which is crossing one another. A circuit may have a crossing branch and still be planar if it can be redrawn such that it has no crossing branches. So uh, if the crossing branches are not there then also it can be a planar circuit. However, we will see that mass analysis always uh, we will be having uh, some simple circuit on plain paper. So let us see the steps to determine the mass current similarly whatever we have seen in the nodal analysis. Here we assign the mass current to the n masses. So we have two masses here and we are assigning the current I1 and I2 as the variables which is in the closed loop and then we apply the KVL to each of the n masses. So we have mass number 1 and mass number 2. Here we will apply the KVL equations that is some of the voltages uh, in a closed loop is 0 and then we will form the KVL equation in mass 1 and KVL equation in mass 2.
So Kevin equation we have already studied. I'll not go in deep here. We can you can see the video lecture related to Kirchhoff's voltage law. So here we have written the KVL in mass one and KVL in mass two, and these two KVL equations we can substitute in the matrix format to form the simultaneous equations. So we have the resistance matrix R, which is multiplied with the current matrix I. to give you the voltage matrix b now current is basically our variable which we need to solve then the current if we want to find that it will be equal to r inverse multiplied with the voltage so this r here is in the form of 2 cross 2 it can be very big matrix if the circuit is having lot of messes involved so in in a circuit which is having suppose 1000 mass then you have 1000 simultaneous equations in that case the taking the inverse of the r will not be possible so we have to switch to some software to give the take out the inverse that is the matlab or a maple now uh, mass analysis with current source so this uh, special things we need to take care other in the previous we have discussed on uh, nodal analysis with voltage source we have uh, seen how the super node comes into picture here the mass analysis with current source so mass analysis to circuit containing the current source current source may be dependent or independent will lead to formation of a super mass and super mass will be the result of combination of two masses that is having a current source in common so it can have more number of masses but for an example we'll take for two masses only to understand it and it can have a dependent source as well as independent source and the source has to be common so case one if the current source is exist only in one mesh so we have seen in the nodal analysis two cases similarly we will be taking two cases in the mesh analysis together uh, in mesh analysis the current source case one is existing only in one mesh if the current source is present at the boundary of one mesh only then we can directly substitute the value of i2 is equal to 5 ampere so the circuit variable that we have taken as the branch uh, the, the mesh current will be equal to the current which is there present in the extreme mesh that is it should not be in common uh, between the two meshes so this is the case one and then we can write the equations where i2 is not a variable now and we have a variable only i1 i2 we can directly substitute in the form of you know minus of 5 ampere seeing the direction of the current i2 is going downward and 5 ampere is going upward so we take i2 is minus 5 and the equations for only one mesh we need to write so substituting we get i1 is equal to minus 2 ampere so whenever a current source is present at the boundary not connecting between the two meshes the circuit become much simpler and we can easily solve the problem whereas when the current source is existing between two meshes so here we can see if a current source is there between two meshes then it is not possible to uh, simply solve it so then these Uh, circuit will treat as the super mesh so super mesh is the one where both the meshes connecting the current will be written as one equations so here we have 20 volt as the source and 6 ohms and 10 ohm will come into series and 4 ohm will be there also in series and will disclose disclude this part will not include this part will remove this part from the circuit to solve the problem for the super mesh analysis now uh, when we have removed it the circuit become much simpler and we can take one uh, current uh, instead of two then we can write the equations or otherwise we can take the both the current i1 and i2 we can we can have one variable here i here we are taking two variables i1 and i2 is indicating whatever the current is flowing in the branches so that current we need to write the equations of kirchhoff's voltage law so written the equation of kirchhoff's voltage law we will find one equations however uh, we need to take care of the super mass also so when we take the equation of the super mass we find what is the current flowing so i2 current which is going upward and i1 current which is going downward plus 6 ampere is applied through the kirchhoff's current law in a particular node then we can have what is the value of i1 and i2 so here we also see that both kirchhoff's voltage law and kirchhoff's current law are required 
to solve the circuit for the super mass problem if the super mass is not there then kirchhoff's voltage law itself is sufficient now let us see the some of the properties of the super mass similar to what we have seen in the super node the uh, current source in the super mass provides the constraint equation necessary to solve for the mass currents so in the super mass we have seen that voltage source was the constant here the current source is the constant in the super mass and super mass will not have its own current and both kirchhoff's voltage law and kirchhoff's current law are applicable uh, in super mass problems if mass mass is not a super mass then only kirchhoff's voltage law we need to take into account but if it is then both kvl and kcl we need to take into account now we have understood the mass and nodal analysis and we have written the simultaneous equations by observing the circuit using kirchhoff's current law and kirchhoff's voltage law however by inspection only we can write the equations for the node and mass analysis so this is basically a shortcut approach which required me the inspection of the circuit to write the equations when all sources in a circuit are independent current sources do not need to apply case kcl or kvl to each node to obtain the equations so this uh, is basically apply for the independent sources we can obtain the equations by mere inspection of the circuit so let us see first the nodal analysis by inspection so we know that the equation has to be in the form of g as the conductance matrix multiplied with the voltage will give you the current so this we have seen in the nodal analysis so by inspecting the circuit we can form this equation conductance matrix because the voltage will be the variables that is at a particular node and the current will be the current that is flowing in the node so first we'll form the diagonal elements so when we forming the diagonal elements this is sum of the conductances connected to node g k so any node uh, or any conductance which is connected at a particular node we can simply add up together to form the all the diagonal elements then the off diagonal elements whatever is there it is the negative of the sum of the conductance that is directly connected between two nodes so between two nodes k and j if we have an element which is connected we simply take the negative sign and put it in the off diagonal elements so off diagonal elements will be the negative one negative sign will be there and it will be sum of the conductance so between two nodes how many uh, sources are there how many uh, sorry how many passive elements are there that you need to like add up and put a negative sign to put it in the off diagonal elements and the voltage are basically the unknown voltage that is Uh, try to find at the node, and the current is basically sum of all independent current sources directly connected to the node with current entering the node treated as positive. So we have taken the assumption that whatever the current is entering the node, we are taking it to be positive, and this should be independent sources, not the dependent sources. So uh, without uh, writing any equations, we can simply uh, get this matrix, and then we can find the voltage. Uh, variables as g inverse into the current so this creation of the g matrix is very important uh, with the some rules that is being given that how the g matrix is created observing the circuit now if uh, we understand the nodal analysis uh, now we go for the mass analysis for the inspection so here in the mass analysis we will be having an equation where we need to find the resistance matrix multiplied with the current and that will give you the voltage equations so this is for the n masses similarly first we will form all the diagonal element of the resistance matrix that is sum of the resistance whatever we have done there for the conductance here we are going to do the same for the resistance adding up all the resistance which is involved in a particular mass k now the off diagonal elements we take a negative first and put the sum of the resistance in common with between the two masses so between two masses so this is mass number 1 if we assume and this is mass number 2 if we assume then whatever the elements which is common between mass 1 and mass 2 it can be more number of elements you just add up and put a negative sign that will be the of diagonal elements so the current are basically the unknown current which is always assumed in the clockwise direction so uh, this 
inspection method will be valid only when we take the current in the clockwise direction. The voltage will be sum taken clockwise for all independent voltage source in mass K with voltage rise treated as positive because we have to uh, flow the current in clockwise direction. So the current voltage has to be positive and negative. Then only it is possible to have the voltage. So we have seen uh, to write the equations for the node analysis and mesh analysis by inspection method. Now we take one example to understand how do we write it. So here we have a two mesh problem and the sources are independent sources. So we have voltage source which is independent. So we can write the matrix in the form of resistance matrix multiplied with the current to give you the uh, voltage. So the resistance matrix will be like first mesh uh, first we'll form the diagonal element so here we have in the first mass we have r1 and r3 as the connecting element so r1 plus r3 in the second uh, mass we have r2 and r3 as the connecting element so we form r2 plus r3 and the off diagonal elements we are taking a negative sign to show the common branches that is r3 so r3 is common between mass 1 and mass 2 so we put a negative sign there and then we multiply it with the current to give the voltage now if we see so if we see that current has to be in the clockwise direction and here the current is coming out of the positive source so the voltage is positive but here the current is not coming from the voltage source rather it is going inside the source so we have minus of v2 so this sign convention is very important to write it in the voltage and the current equation so always whenever we have the positive terminal and the negative terminal of a voltage then the current has to be coming out from the positive terminal to form in the clockwise direction so we can just write now how do we choose the nodal versus mesh analysis that we see so any network that is containing series connected element voltage source or a super mess uh, uh, suitable for the mesh analysis so if we have a series connected element uh, voltage sources or super mass are more suitable for the mass analysis so such type of network we observe and if we have a parallel connected elements or current sources super nodes are more suitable for nodal analysis so basically uh, we we choose between the kitchoff's current law kitchoff's voltage law similarly we choose nodal analysis or mass analysis seeing whether it is a series connected circuit or a parallel connected circuit so when we have series go for the mass analysis where you have a parallel go for the nodal analysis seeing whether the source is a voltage source or a current source so if you have a voltage source go for mass analysis if you have a current source go for nodal analysis a circuit with uh, fewer nodes than mass is better analyzed using node analysis. So if the node is less, fewer nodes than the masses, then go for node analysis. Whereas the circuit with fewer mass, if the mass is low than the nodes, then go for mass analysis. So just count how many nodes you have or how many mass you have, whichever is lower than and decide whether you have to go for node analysis or mass analysis. If node voltages are required, it may be expedient to apply nodal analysis. So whenever we need to find the node voltage, then it is better always to choose the nodal analysis. If branch or mass current are required, it is better to use the mass analysis. So these rules we need to follow to see whether we need to find uh, the mass current or the nodal voltage and choose appropriately the technique of solving the circuit. So it is very important you understand the Kitchos voltage law, Kitchos current law, Ohm's law and the nodal analysis and mass analysis that will be the very fundamental for solving any type of problems in circuit analysis. Thank you for now. See you in the next lecture.